Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. Promise you joy in the mystery. Dr. Marissa, also known as the Asian Oprah. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, laugh, love, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Pay. <laughs> And welcome, you're tuned in to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa, the morning show here on KCAA, CNBC News, NBC News, and NBC Sports Radio Station, AM 1050, FM 106.5, and streaming everywhere. iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, TuneIn, Audible, Amazon Music, Tiki Live, Rumble, Podchaser, Spreaker, Streaker, and many more. I am Dr. Marissa. Why so many places? Because I want to maximize my splatter zone for more hope and happiness. And I balance out all the bad news out there that's so readily available. Y'all know what I'm talking about everywhere you turn. It's uh, some story about uh, bad government, bad people, or bad weather. So I have uh, started now 623 consecutive weeks ago on air on camera to bring you good news to balance out all of that bad news. So if you've missed any of the 1,140 podcast shows, yes, I think I was doing podcasts before they called them podcasts, then please do, excuse me, uh, free subscribe to my YouTube TV channel where you can get a free, uh, when you free subscribe, you get an alert that I'm coming on every weekday morning here on The Morning Show on KZAA, the station that leaves no listener behind number one talk in the IE, and hopefully soon everywhere else. I am so delighted. I have a couple of things to bring you this morning. Uh, uh, right after we have breakfast, we're going to have a, an interview that I got to do at Secret Knock in San Diego when I was Dr. Marissa reporting live on location there with a beautiful inside and out woman, Nicole Kernahan. And uh, I'm going to bring that to you as well as... A couple of uh, Mental Health Matters Monday's tips uh, after the interview. So hopefully you'll stay in tune with that. I'm also giving away a pair of tickets to the Al Stewart uh, uh, concert that's at the Saban Theater, one of my great show sponsors, When Music Meets the Soul Productions, and uh, more information on that. So hang in there. Stay tuned. And, and if you're not listening on the radio on the way into work or <laughs> wherever you're going, please do um, resubscribe, as I said, and there on YouTube, as well as LinkedIn and Facebook, you can chat and you can actually um, play along with me this morning, but not while you're driving. All right. And here we go. First thing we like to do all the time on the show started about a, uh, over a year ago. Instead of starting with all the bad news, we condition you or I encourage you to work that muscle of gratitude. So taking a bite of my gratitude sandwich entails eight specific things at the top of the bun. What are you grateful for? And the way I define gratitude is things outside of yourself. And the bottom of the bun, which I'm going to model for you that for you to do before you go to bed tonight, is eight things that you're specifically gr uh, grateful for inside of yourself. So working that muscle of appreciation, because it is my BS, my belief system, that good mental health starts with a foundation of self-love, self-respect, self-care, self-soothing. And that's why I want you to, to put out there, toot your own horn in a nice way. What do you like about yourself? So let's get started. Breakfast. Uh, eight things I'm grateful for. One is... I have a new sound engineer who's in the background is getting uh, trained today, and uh, I do really appreciate and am grateful for all the guys, literally all guys at KCAA who support this show and are uh, continuing to allow 
me to function 88% perfectly on the air on camera. And I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that I get to wake up this morning. The planets did not crash into each other last night. I get another opportunity all day today, unless they crash uh, with the eclipse, but uh, that I'm grateful that I get to, you know, just take a breath and enjoy living, loving, laughing, learning all day. Uh, I am grateful to wish my adopted son, part of my family, my Friday co-host who is going on hiatus. Uh, we have a new show starting on Fridays, uh, and I'll tell you a little more about that later. But her son, Trace Austin, my um, I'm the honorary auntie. He just celebrated a birthday. So happy birthday dear trace you are amazing and you did not fall far from the musical tree of your grandfather otis williams founder of the temptations happy birthday to you happy birthday trace let's give him a little applause <laughs> You want to follow him. He is definitely an up and coming musician and actor and dancer, singer, you, you name it. Uh, the Trace Austin on all the socials. I am grateful that I got invited to uh, compete in an international karaoke competition. <laughs> so I've been uh, uh, practicing and uh, the finals are in, I think, Finland, which is would be amazing, but we're just at the first step. Uh, and I am grateful that, oh, I um, did spring cleaning and I did my shop in my closet event over the weekend, which was a lot of fun and a book signing on top of that. I am grateful finally that I get to go to China this year uh, with my daughter in June for the Beijing uh, Book Fair. Uh, yes, COVID stopped my book tour, but we're back on this year. Got back from Australia, sold out there, and uh, delighted and excited to be able to continue bringing this book, which today, since it is Mental Health Matters Mondays, the first eight people to go to my website, drmarissa.life, uh, to put in um, Asian Oprah giveaway get an audio book version of that book, Eight Ways to Happiness. And a lot of the My Happy 88 tips come from that book. And I'm grateful that it hit number one bestseller on Amazon, national bestseller and a bunch of awards. But most of all, I'm grateful that it has helped a lot of people move through their pain into the power. All right. Bottom of the button. What do you like about yourself? Uh, the reason why I do this mm -hmm. is because a lot of us don't like ourselves. Uh, I remember an interview I did in the Philippines with Karen Davila, who's known as the Philippine Oprah. And she said that a lot of people, um, I said, a lot of people hate themselves. And she said, isn't that strong? And I said, well, if you think about it, who's your worst enemy? I'm my own worst enemy. When you have 99 compliments and one insult, where do you go? The insult. So a lot of us have difficulty liking ourselves. So we go around looking with our antenna for likes, literally in social media, how many likes, which is why I'm so counter to looking at numbers. It is important for you to know what you are good at more so than what you're not and to own that. Because frankly, my dear, if you can't approve of yourself, how the fork do you expect anyone else to approve of you? So that's why we do this exercise. I want you to do it before you go to bed. That way you're not thinking about who done me wrong, what I didn't do right. And of course, you're not going to be able to sleep. So a good night's sleep starts with saying, I appreciate my ability to learn and grow and expand and um, constantly loving to do new things, to appreciate the deliciousness of life. Those of you who are on my social doc balance on Instagram will see that I post sometimes, you know, me eating because I want to be one with my food and love the, the, the taste of delicious food. So that is um, something I appreciate my, about myself. I appreciate my ability to be 88% perfect. 12% of the time I step in it, 12% of the time I'm impatient, 
Well, actually, I'm never impatient because patient is not in my vocabulary, <laughs> but uh, I'm OK with the 12 percent that I'm not um, fabulous. But 88 percent of the time I am. I appreciate my ability to be caring. I appreciate my ability to be creative, um, especially in my clothing. I appreciate my ability to, um, mm, let's see, to practice 88% of the time what I teach, which is why the show is called Take My Advice. I'm not using it, by the way. And that's it for breakfast sandwich. I didn't see anybody come into the comment with their own gratitude and appreciation. Know that you can do this on your own. But if you join me for the next 28 consecutive days doing this good life habit or discipline, I promise you will sandwich your day in the most positive way. All righty then, it is time for an interview and I'm not going to give her the uh, intro only because she's going to give herself an intro, but uh, I was delighted to, uh, Dr. Versa, uh, reporting live in San Diego, as I mentioned before, a good friend, Greg Reed, does this amazing event that you cannot pay to go to, you have to be invited to pay to go to. And uh, every year he does amazingly bringing guests like this year, the soup Nazi was one of my favorites, Dave Cause, who I actually know through my twin sister, Keiko Matsui, amazing jazz musician, extraordinaire. Uh, if you get a chance to go to any of his events, and uh, I understand Greg's going to be going on a cruise to do the self-development side of things, which is awesome. And uh, yeah. So I met a, a series of people uh, through my great people connection. Her name is Marissa Friedman. She's amazing as well. She was on stage and she hooks me up with these great uh, people in her uh, tribe to interview. And uh, Nicole was one of those people. So without further ado, let's see if I can do this uh, the best possible way. I had this set up, but. Uh, you know what? I'm going to play something here that um, I meant to play earlier and I didn't. All right. And while it's playing, this is a, a early commercial. How's that? <laughs> You're too good to take my advice. I'm not using a gift balance with Dr. Marissa. The morning show here on KCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind, AM 1050, FM 106.5, and streaming everywhere. And if I can find it, it would be wonderful. Here we go. This is the commercial. Welcome to Balance Tai Chi Go. My name is Dr. Marissa Pei. For the next 28 minutes, we will be slow dancing with the universe in a moving meditation that promotes inner peace, one breath at a time. Just follow the sound of my voice and move with me as I guide you through this ancient wisdom through new thought practice. As a corporate psychologist, I created this practice in response to my life and those of my clients. We were professional, high achievement oriented, multitasking control freaks and exhausted. No matter how many successes, it was never enough. That coupled with a painful life experience led me on a quest to find another way to live and back to my Chinese roots. If you practice regularly, I can promise you that it will impact all health vortexes body, mind, spirit, soul. You will be in a place of balance and inner peace the way we were created. Xie xie. Be my partner, dance with me, just hold on. Awesome. And without further ado, 
here is my interview with Nicole. Hold it, I'll take a picture of that. One of the best things you're talking. <laughs> it's great, yes. It's just a <laughs> Dr. Marissa reporting live here at Secret Knock. And one of the best things about Secret Knock is meeting powerful women who are doing things in their one of a kind, wonderful way. And uh, I get introduced by other people who are fabulous in their own right. And I got the introduction this morning, so I'm delighted to speak with Nicole. And in, in order to introduce yourself, this is what I'd like you to think of. I don't have an answering machine. I have a questioning machine. Okay. So when you call me, it says, who are you and what do you want? So who are you and what do you want? Well, okay. I'm Nicole <laughs> Kernahan. Thank you for asking. I'm an elite coach and I am the chief operating officer of the international coaching company Elevated Worldwide with Tony Child, who I know you have met and interviewed yes, in the past. Yes. So I really help. Um, I work with high performing executives and entrepreneurs through the power of the mind mm -hmm. to allow them to step into and make sure that they are consciously making choices they're they're allowing themselves to make that make those choices and changing their perspective so it's a unique <laughs> path to empowerment yeah. when you were mm -hmm. a kid did you know that's what you were going to be doing well when i was a, a young child maybe seven or eight years old i wanted to be supergirl so uh, sort of in one way or another <laughs> yes <laughs> i did want to empower people well, to, there you go. with the power of choice and uh, changing their perspectives but obviously they didn't. and where did you grow up I actually grew up in out just outside of Toronto, Canada. Oh, so I'm Canadian. Canadian. <laughs> I was born in Kitchener, Waterloo, what? Ontario. Well, I, was, I grew up in Guelph. Oh, oh very down the street. street. Very close. <laughs> wow. And so you went to college. You had a track that you were on. What made you sort of gravitate towards mind, uh, the power of mind, all of that? Yeah, I actually went to the University of in, in Laurier University in the city of Waterloo, which you know since it University was like, Waterloo. Well, both at Laurier University okay. in okay. the city of Waterloo. Okay. Uh, so I went to business to, to school for business. I have a background in business, worked in corporate for many years. Um, but I had a physical episode. So my journey into the mind actually started with my body. Oh, right. Physically. Tell me about that. Yeah, it was it, it was it was originally diagnosed as a stroke, later diagnosed as multiple sclerosis. Now, to meet me today, you can't tell this was 20 years ago. I'm doing amazing, wow. but I was paralyzed on the right side. I lost the functionality, and I. Wow. So it was it was a uh, at the time. How old were you at the? Time? I was 21. Good. So it knocked me off my tracks. You know, you just don't expect something. No. Any health condition, you don't ever. You're not expecting it. Um, and to be honest, for a long time, I attributed my transformation, my healing to the health, to nutrition, to lifestyle, to exercise, in which I still do believe that that is an incredibly, incredibly important aspect. But about 10 years after my healing, mm -hmm. I realized that the root cause of my <laughs> the root cause of my results was actually because of my mindset. Wow. It was because I believed I could heal. It was because I was persistent. I had discipline. I had that self-image. You know, I had a vision. I so it was all these concepts are really in the mind mm. that allowed me to take those actions that delivered my results. Your thoughts lead to your feelings. Your feelings moved into action. You know, that is a a, a BS <laughs> belief system. <laughs> that. Sorry, did you learn that funny. from your family? Did you? It's supposed to be funny. <laughs> okay. Did you learn that from your family? From from where did you get that? So, I would say yes. The the initials because I would call myself an unconscious competence at the time when I was twenty one. I had the physical episode. For many, they would think worst case scenario. They would be in fear. They would be in doubt. They, right. Whereas I did. I saw opportunity, potential. I, I heard the diagnosis and I said, thank you. And I'm gonna choose a different prognosis. So I had that innate, I call it unconscious competence. Yeah, because yeah. I just, police. 
we're having some uh, technical opportunities to to uh, take a breath and to pause for a second. We are on location. Those of you know, I spent uh, well. I've been on Secret Knock stage. Greg calls me part of their family. Colt, his son, uh, apparently loves me. I love him. Uh, and that's where we are. And so they're setting up for the gala tonight. So if you hear uh, punctuation points in the background, that's what it is. But I think it is a, a very uh, apt analogy yeah. to certainly what happened to you. And I, I just want to go back because you, you didn't gloss over it, but I really want to take a moment to acknowledge I can't even imagine at age 21 when you had the world in front of you you were graduated from college you were you had dreams and hopes and desires and then you woke up or what had tell me that because I want not because I want to go to that dark place but one of the things that I know my role is, is to change the BS belief system in the world sure. that when something bad happens to you, you either uh, are being punished for something or that uh, it puts you behind and you're never going to catch up and, and all of that bull shiitake. <laughs> so that's why I, 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 I would like, if you wouldn't mind, just that is incredible that you, you know, I really, I want to acknowledge that uh, uh, and, and because I know that it couldn't have been easy. So, and uh, if you feel emotional, good, because I love it when my guests cry because tears are the disinfectant that keep our hearts soft. And then I know that you're talking to me, your heart's open. So just take me back again to that the the um the the part where you were walking to school you were walking, what yeah, happened that's a great that is basically what it was it oh, was actually wow. it, it wasn't i woke up and all of a sudden i couldn't use my arm mm. it was actually over about three or four days it started to be tingly started to feel a little numb i thought i was just waking up you know you wake up and your hands asleep yeah uh, then it just didn't wake up mm. get sleeping mm. and I would be dropping a pen just like my, I didn't tell my hand to let that go but it so it really was over a few days and eventually and I went to you're like, and, you, and you're like oh I'm okay yes I can fix this yes, I'm strong I got this, I'm I got this. everything's fine yeah I was yeah. actually in a group and then class yeah I asked some of my peers I was like does my speech sound slurred that was my, that was the final straw oh where they're, they were identifying that, okay, now it's in your speech. So something oh, is more wow. than just a, your, and then it took good. them a while to even figure out what it was. Yeah. That has to be really frustrating. Yeah. yeah. It's, yeah. it was, it, they originally diagnosed as a stroke because the scan only identified one lesion. Oh. And then it was actually a while later where the multiple lesions showed up and they would re-diagnose it as multiple sclerosis. Um, I just can't even. And then, yeah. so by the time they got the diagnosis, you said, "I'm not this diagnosis. This diagnosis is not going to define me." Where you know that's amazing. Uh, I do choose that way as well. My daughter had a horrific uh, rollover in a, a car. You know, fractured neck, fractured wrist, and I refused to go there. You know, I just yeah. said. We'll see what the doctor says at the next sex, right? That's it. Yep. So a little bit for anybody who's going through any kind of physical hardship, the way that you can discipline your mind to not go to worst case scenario, we have another example here of how that benefits your heels. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. And the parents were supportive at this time. That well, must have been. Oh. they were all supportive. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Parents, friends, they just thought I was that I missed the diagnosis. I don't think she heard the doctor because I I was Refused. able to very quickly. I did accept the diagnosis mm -hmm. and I, right? I, I accepted the diagnosis. I saw the scans. I just chose not to accept the prognosis, which is you may or may not 
regain walk functionality. Again. You may or may not walk again. You may or may not, you know, this might come back. And, and so I just chose not to accept the prognosis. Wow. And that was the choice. I did, yeah. you know, right? That was the choice. And because of that, mm. when you believe, I love the no BS. <laughs> the BS are great. The, you know, change your belief system. When you believe that it is possible, even though you don't know yet, you don't know how yet, you don't know who, it's it's that feeling was what moved into action. I found the naturopathic, the nutritionist, the chiro, physio. Uh, I also did, I did it all because I believed mm -hmm. that I was going to figure it out. So then I didn't stop trying until I figured out what was. Yeah. yeah. When you don't believe and when you're fear, fearful or in doubt or worry, then it's harder to commit to those actions. Yes. And it's harder to receive the inspiration of what to do. Yeah. The inspired action. You know, yeah. I was preaching about that because I think that we don't understand that if you are a worry board, mm -hmm. right, you are not going to receive any kind of inspired yep. direction on what to do so we have that example but yeah great so I, I i did really want to anchor um one kudos to you, Thank you. and uh, for that i'm giving you dr Mercer's beneficial presence on the planet award because you are a, now i'm gonna cry <laughs> yeah good because you Thank took you. something that uh many people would have used as a justifiable reason to stop trying or stop wanting or stop desiring and you didn't and uh so if she can do it you can do it and uh so that that's great okay so then you through diet you said exercise just uh because i know they're gonna ask me what kind of diet were you on that helped you with this yep yeah i still am okay today. So okay. no problem, um, plant-based. I do, I do consume some animal products or okay. some protein, but mm -hmm. gluten-free, dairy-free, highly, high plant-based, a lot of vegetables, a lot of omega-3s and certain supplements. And that's all, putting all that goodness in, but while every day putting my body, my mental state into a, a mental state into a place of calm and peace as much as possible, we're human, it's not always, because that puts my body into the ability to heal. <laughs> so you heard it here. This is the holistic solution to everything that is diseasing you. Okay. So it's not just the body. It's not just the mind. Yeah. It is a direct. Deepak Chopra says there's two emotions that will um, make you sick. Anger yep. and hostility. It's just just anger on steroids. <laughs> three, yep. you're proving him right. Uh, three uh, emotions that make you your cells in harmony: love, peace, yeah. and creativity. And uh, you're a walking yeah. example of that. Again. Yes. So, tell me then, after that, how you got involved in elevated mind. And I did have Tony on, and glad to be following up with people who are uh, good examples of how this methodology works. Yes. So so the organization is elevated worldwide and it was through a series of events, a long story short, I actually was in a health business because I believed at the time that that was the primary, my primary feeling. I yeah. didn't quite understand. I was an unconscious competent of how much my mind had played into that. Mm -hmm. And then I stumbled into a three-day seminar actually with Bob Proctor initially. Uh -huh. And that's who I originally partnered with, Bob Proctor or Bill Banta. You'll you'll just speak yeah. to Yeah. And Did you um, know Bob was on my show. Really? Yeah, I got to Aww. interview Bob because Aww. he's a he's a, a good friend of my big brother, Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith. And I actually was brought to his lifetime achievement award that was given to Bob Proctor, thanks to PJ. I don't know if you know PJ Thomas, but He's the one that brought me to Carnegie Hall to honor Bob wow. because I got my brother to go. <laughs> they wanted, they really wanted Michael. So I He's also do, incredible. And yes. And so that's yeah. how that happened. So we have that so in common. I didn't connected. know that. Uh, all the dots connect, yes, right? That's, so there's so, never but, six degrees. It's down to three degrees. Of mm -hmm. um, so Bob Proctor was the first one who made the dots connect for me, where all of a sudden, this unconscious competent, I realized, oh my goodness, 
like cartwheels, the light came on in the dark room. And I just, I saw, I had an understanding of the power of how much, what I had done in my own life, but also now I was aware of everyone else. And I was aware of how to apply this the thought aspect mm. to my business, to my relationships, to other areas. Mm. Right. And yeah. it would just, once, once your eyes are opened, it's hard, it's hard to cancel yeah. sometimes when you know, you know, and yeah. Okay, I just so let me give an example degree. that you can sort of walk. So I'll wake up in the morning. This rarely happens, uh, but uh, I'll pretend it does. <laughs> and I wake up and I just don't feel like getting out of bed. I, I know I have tons of things to do. I have commitments I have to keep, but I just don't feel like getting out of bed. And then the more I stay in bed, the more guilty I feel, angry at myself. And then the other voice is like, that's it. Um, you're not the boss of me. I don't want to. And then, um, you know, I've always wanted to be a procrastinator, but never got around to it. And uh, then I end up, you know, staying in bed, comforters on, trip to the fridge, get the ice cream, whatever it is, and go back to bed. And then next thing you know, um, you are getting final notice bills. That's the extreme. Yeah. How would you apply? this elevated mind system for someone that's not very uncommon, especially since uh, the, what's that thing called? The beer virus, the pandemic <laughs> has happened. Uh, there's some people who are still in that place. Yeah. What would you say to them or coach them on? Thank you for that example. That is a very, I don't want to say extreme, but that's a very, that's the deepest spot mm -hmm. so a lot of the times um, when someone's in that deep that. space mm -hmm. if i don't probably the easiest step is to attempt to look at some things in your life that you can be thankful for it, before getting out of bed that can be it's so easy to do and so easy not to do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so gratitude starting the day with gratitude yes. starting okay. the day before you get out of bed mm -hmm. three things and it's not just a gratitude list. Mm. It's the repetition of doing that every single day and then getting into a space where you actually feel the appreciation. So mm -hmm. thinking of gratitude items is just sure. conscious mind. I got it. I thought of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's can you actually tempt I, without being hard on yourself? Mm -hmm. Give it your best shot to get into a emotional state where I can feel my, I can feel the appreciation mm -hmm. for that thing. Mm -hmm. um, just in that example, because you got to start with the beginning. I yep. can't start with that person and say, what's your goal? And yeah, what do you yeah. want to do? Right. They're just like, I, I can't get out of bed yet. So right. it's it's the simplest step to, to attempt to look at something that you can appreciate. I also like to use the power of words. Mm -hmm. So when I mentioned the idea of, of having choice and perspective, mm -hmm. now affirmations, I have their place in time. Um, but in that state, when someone's just down, if they're not going to just say, I'm amazing, it's it's not going to work. Correct. But they might be able to say, I believe that it is possible that I can feel a bit better today. Mm -hmm. I believe that it, that is possible that there are things that I'm thankful for. I believe that I do have something to be thankful for. It's, it's just a progressive a tiny affirmation. Little. It's mm -hmm. not a, oh, I like that. I don't think I've ever heard that. Mm -hmm. Progressive affirmation. Yeah. Okay. And then they're ready after a few days or a few weeks or a month then they can bring it in, build it up, but it's the stepping stone. Right, right, right. Okay. <laughs> um, if you've just tuned in and you're wondering what's going on in studio today, you are tuned to take my advice. I'm not using a kit balance with Dr. Marissa. The morning show here on NBC News Radio, KCAA, AM 1050, FM 106.5, and streaming everywhere, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and of course, where you can watch and listen is my YouTube TV channel. And today I have a very special guest. She is talking not just about her own journey, believe it or not. Uh, she had a, what they thought was a stroke and she exhibits none of that. And she did it through the power of both her mind and her body. And that's what she's talking to us about as well as sharing uh, some practical tools from Elevated Mind on how you can reclaim your life and your, you know, present, future success. Did I get that about right? Elevated Worldwide is the company name okay. that we are using this concept of leveraging your mind, through elevating your mind. Got it. <laughs> You'll remember 
Uh, I did interview, I think not last year, Tony Child, who was the founder of yes. the Lincoln yes. School uh, Methodology and yes. Play. So Absolutely. we're delighted to have you. Thank you and so um, tell me, uh, so so I just learned what are the progressive apps. Yeah, I like that stepping stones into. Yeah. Yes, if if someone's coming from that place where they're not wanting to get out of bed in the morning, right. if if that's not where they are, then there may be a different recommendation. It's okay, personalized okay. that exact example. Yeah. If someone doesn't want to, is not feeling that they're able to take that first step, then those were the baby steps, one okay. step at a time. And that was to say, I believe it is possible to feel a little bit better today. Yes. Love. It. I love it. Yes. Okay. Another tool or wherever you'd like to go. Well, and since you know Bob Proctor, you yes. would be familiar really with the two ways to change your subconscious mind, to change that, that deep part of you that controls about 95% of your results. So the example I gave about doing gratitude every day and having some progressive affirmations, maybe moving into other tools in the morning with repetition. That's one of the ways okay. with mm -hmm. repetition and yep, emotion. Yep. Mm -hmm. And emotion. Okay. I don't leave Rep, if it's, uh, people are listening and they think, oh, I just need to repeat things. Repeating things without emotion does not change your subconscious. That is does a, not change the part of you that's going to change your results. Because then it's just words, it's yeah. just lip service, literally. Yeah. Uh, so how, but what if you're not feeling that emotion? Like you really don't believe that you're going to feel better today. Because I think a lot of people shoot themselves in the foot and the head because they continue to argue against their own they they argue for their limitations yes. and that's a law of attraction uh, abraham hicks term that i love because we do we, we it's like i used to do it when i was a kid um uh, before a test oh i know i'm gonna bomb now i didn't I, but i should have <laughs> you so probably could have done a lot better if you didn't say that right that's before true. that's true that's true yeah so how do you how do you deal with it when you don't feel it? So the idea of that progression, if you, if you're just starting with by saying, I believe it is possible that I can feel better. You're not saying, I believe I will feel better. You're saying, I believe that it is possible. possible. If you just don't believe that it's possible, like we just, there may, we may need to get into therapy. It just depends on where the starting point is. Right, right, with right. Where right, someone's right, at. Right, right. Um, that is a very easy term to be able to say with some feel, yes, right? So that, okay. Absolutely, and when you do gratitude, um, it's because you're grateful for something that is currently in your life, it is an easier way to get into an emotion because you're not you're not trying to create something that is not, that doesn't Huge. exist yet. Right, beyond your, right. your belief in yourself. Right, so it is easier to yeah. get into that emotion um, because you are thinking of something that is current and it is real. Yeah. But it, it's something that your feelings are in your subconscious. Right, right. It's not the consciously talking is not what it's going to do, what will do it. Um, music, sounds, breath work. There's a lot of other tools that can help you kind of tap in and to touch in. Um, and we do have an event as well that does a deep core tap into your subconscious mind experience. So mm -hmm. that, that'll help. Sometimes getting into an environment. Where right. you're kind of immersed into it, like yeah. the person who doesn't want to get out of bed in the morning is not going to get be, there. Has to get encouraged yeah. enough to get into the room. Yeah, of well, the thing yeah. that will get you into the yeah. deep brain states. Mm -hmm. So that's one. Second is so. The, so one is constant space repetition. Okay. The emotion. The second so one is an emotional impact, impact, which would be something like an event. Mm -hmm. And often it, it is often, unfortunately, something that is negative or. Not always, but you know, car accident or my my emotional impact. Yes. Just getting diagnosed with a stroke, and getting being paralyzed. Yeah. It's it's like in an instant, it changes how you see yourself, changes how you see the world, your identity, your perspective, and um, and create getting into an environment where you can create a positive emotional impact. Mm -hmm. Maybe how you can all second way. Right. Where you can intentionally change, but you rarely can do that on your own. Because the emotional yeah. impact has to be so deep. That's why it's an, right. not because right. you're not capable. Right. We're all like, I'm right. Potential, but. Mm -hmm. right, right, cool. Mm -hmm. cool. And uh, so you're doing this kind of work with what kind of people? Like who, who, who would benefit from this? I mean, it sounds like everything. I right. So you. <laughs> well, we do 
and I mean, right, anyone can benefit from the concepts and these exercises. Mm primarily elevated worldwide work with hyper-marine entrepreneurs and executives. We do primarily work with people who want to grow their business and don't realize that they are the barrier, the they, biggest block. You're the problem, right? We heard Susie say yeah. it yeah. is when they can grow themselves, it absolutely unlocks an un unlimited trajectory. Mm -hmm. And it is the willingness to do that work yeah to do the work on yourselves to know that when you change everyone around you benefits your right. family your friends your peers if you're stressed and overwhelmed and anxious you cannot show up as a 10 in your business you yeah. cannot have you mentioned earlier you can't have creative solutions mm -hmm. the ideas and solutions to your business problems or life problems don't come to you when you're in a state of fear worry and doubt yes so it's being willing to know that right <laughs> <laughs> right and then do the work right yeah. yeah yeah admit it yeah like you're you know the, the problem there is a problem houston there is a problem and that problem is you mm -hmm. right yeah. so and you're the solution so right and yeah. the solution yeah yeah you don't do you're it the problem you. and the yeah all right so um so if you're listening right now and you are a business owner and you are feeling like you could do more or be more successful and you're not quite sure what to do next, how would they contact? Well, I'll probably suggest we to go to our website, keepelevated.com. And welcome to find me, Nicole Kernahan, as well on social platforms. Mm -hmm. And uh, spell that. Yeah, <laughs> Nicole Kernahan. Well, keep elevated, it's K E E P E L E V A T E D dot com. That's the website, um, as well as some of our other social platforms. And Nicole Kernahan is K E R N O H A N. N I C O L E is my first name. And Facebook, Instagram, I share daily posts. I do daily videos. A lot of a lot of content to to help fill up the world and provide that peace and freedom. So we love just we love having follow. Awesome. Last question I usually ask my guests is who or what are you most grateful for? Hmm. I'm sure you hear this, but I would have to say my parents, because my, you asked earlier and I didn't totally answer it, but the reason that I believe I healed myself quickly was because of the beliefs that were passed down from me. Mm -hmm. Before age seven is when the majority of those beliefs are formed. So I did have that unconscious confidence because I was programmed to believe it's possible to believe that I am able to do that I can do that. And that came from my parents, which came from their parents, right? It all gets passed down. Yeah. So yeah, that was the first work. What are their names? Joanne, Joanne and Al Fennel. Thank you, Joanne Shout out. and Al. <laughs> all right. Now, what I do at the end of every show is peace in. It's all about balance. Peace in, peace out. World peace through inner peace. Now go and have the best day ever. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Nicole. It's such a beautiful person. And uh, I looked it up. One of my uh, fellow Agape International Spiritual Center sisters, Christina Applegate, also has multiple sclerosis. Um, and uh, I had no idea Montel Williams. Uh, you'll remember him, a great talk show host in an era that was you know, fraught with the uh, sensational, you know, Jerry Springer type. He, as well as Oprah, my honorable moniker, did a lot to bring more, you know, um, heartfelt or spiritual uh, um, emphasis there. He also had multiple sclerosis. So uh, I just find her story, at, her true story of her life, extremely inspiring and especially uh, applicable for Mental Health Monday Matters because, um, you know, when tragedy strikes and, and this is one of those um, BS belief systems that I wanted to hit head on is that a lot of people uh, have pain in life. It is not this uh, walk in the park, people have an expectation that you know, nor normal life is only 
you know, uh, doing the American dream, going to school, best schools, getting the, uh, having a great job, moving up the tracks, ha getting married, having children, you know, acquiring stuff, going on vacations, and then uh, having relatives squabble over your uh, what you're leaving. And that's not really the truth about life is pain in life is mandatory. Um, whatever you're going through is not, doesn't mean there's something wrong with you or that you are being punished, but it is something that allows us to be chiseled into, um, you know, beautiful uh, beings that they are. And, and Nicole is such a great example of that. Uh, I've been very open about, you know, I'm one of the seven out of 10 of us who've had childhood trauma. And again, I don't regret a thing because it chiseled me into who I am now. And 88% of the time, I like who I am and I am fabulous. And, you know, 12% of the time I step in it. But that is the role of pain in life. That is the role of things that you don't want to have happen and you don't expect to have happen. As in her case, uh, multiple sclerosis, a diagnosis of that. We are not our diagnosis. Bottom line. It is something that affects us and through all pain, if you can make it out the other side, is power. And that is the uh, happy 88 tip for today's uh, Mental Health Matters Monday's uh, message. And uh, I wanted just to really thank her so much. Uh, do find her, Nicole Kern-Nohan. I had to remember the O comes before the A. Uh, and if you just, I just Googled it now to see if I could find it easily. And I can, and I will bring that up for you. Keep Elevated is uh, the, the company. And uh, there's a beautiful picture of her. So you can find her if you're a business leader, business owner, uh, she will be able to help you no matter what's happened to you, as you can see the, the strength of her mind and the strength of her resolve and, and the disciplines that she shared with us, you know, just a little at a time. Uh, my happy 88 tip version of that is 15 minutes at a time. I can do anything for 15 minutes at a time even if it's two minutes at a time. If you're just starting to learn how to meditate, meditation is a wonderful healing thing because it stops that critical mind. So, you know, start with two minutes, take the breath, add a minute, you know, everything we can do if we just start. Once we start, there's a little bit of momentum going and law of attraction, the more you are uh, on that path and the, the, uh, you're rolling down that hill, the, the faster it becomes. And then next thing you know, you have a really good life habit. All right. Um, oh, she's in studio. Well, she's a, uh, it was amazing to speak with you, Dr. Rizzo. Thanks for the opportunity to share. I didn't know if you're going to be able to come on. Glad that you could. And if you have any questions for her, um, please feel free to do so in the chat. If you've just tuned in and you're wondering what's going on in studio today, this is Take My Advice. I'm not using a kit balance with Dr. Marissa, the morning show here on KCAA, AM 1050, FM 106.5, uh, NBC News Radio, home to the Asian Oprah, streaming everywhere, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and of course, my YouTube TV channel, where if you free subscribe, you'll get an alert every weekday morning to tune in with me as you're on your way to work or wherever you're going. And it, since it is Monday, Monday, uh, if you have subscribed, not for free, and you are a Happy 88 Mission supporter, uh, you're joining me uh, with, uh, I'm on a mission for 88 million more happy people in the next eight years as I travel on book tour again with this book, as well as speaking, uh, which got shut down during the pandemic. Then uh, $2.99 is the first level where on a weekly basis, Monday, right after the show, uh, you'll get a chance to ask me anything, uh, free uh, happiness coaching if you'd like, or we can talk about multiple sclerosis or anything that you um, have 
uh, of interest. I don't know if I can get Nicole to stay on for a little bit um, after the show. Uh, the, the, the NBC News Radio side will go to the next program, but we'll stay on here on the Love Streaming platform with StreamYard. Uh, let's see. What else? Tomorrow, uh, I will have a mate of Nicole's. Uh, he also has worked with Bob Proctor, um, actually many, many years with him closely. His name is Bill Banta. He will be my spotlight secret knock interview tomorrow. And I will also be playing a portion of my interview with Bob Proctor uh, that I did uh, a number of years ago. He is on the other side. He's loving us from there. I'm sure he's teaching us from there as well. And uh, so that'll be tomorrow's show. So make sure you tune in for that. But uh, I want to also acknowledge and thank um, Marissa Friedman, who uh, connected me with all these great people at Secret Knot. Peace in, peace out to you. And uh, yeah, I'm so delighted that you could be here. Not quite sure on timing. Uh, I need a countdown from my uh, studio engineer here, but I'm looking at the counter. Uh, if you do have any questions, since Nicole is in the chat, please do. Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh, yes, will be great to see both. Tomorrow's show, definitely. Oh, I know what I need to do. Asian Oprah giveaway is uh, tickets to the Saban Theater. And uh, the performer is Al Stewart. And I don't know if I'm dating myself <laughs> with uh, uh, Al Stewart's music. Uh, some people don't know who he is, but I know that uh, I loved his um, passages, his song passages. Let's see if I can find here. There we go. Um, time passages. Uh, is, uh, and then there's another one that he's really well known for. Um share this. Na, 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 na. I should, uh, oh, copyright though, I can't <laughs> pull up some of his YouTube. Uh, Year of the Cat. Year of the Cat. Um, he came to stardom as part of the legendary British folk revival in the 60s. Um, let's see, Year of the Cat and Time Passages. So he will be on stage April 21st. So I'm giving um, a pair of tickets to his show from now until the show. Thanks to a uh, show sponsor, When Music Meets the Soul, uh, for my Asian Oprah giveaway. Thank you, Dana. Uh, headliner is at 8, and tickets are on sale. But if you go to... DrMarissa.life, which I will quickly pull up here. I think I'm running out of time, though, so I'm going to come back <laughs> because I just looked at the time. I am uh, sure that you know how to go to DrMarissa.life and just put in your email, Asian Oprah Giveaway, and let me know if it is the uh, Eight Ways to Happiness audiobook or tickets to Al Stewart, and I'll get those to you. All right. Uh, anything else? Okay. We have uh, less than two minutes now, I think. But thank you so much for joining me today for Mental Health Matters Mondays and my very special interview with Nicole uh, Kernahan. And she is staying after for the stream, I believe. And uh, those of you who have pre subscribed, just hang on. And as soon as we go outro with the, the news at the top, NBC News at the top of the hour at 10 with KCAA, the station that leaves no listener behind, then absolutely uh, join me for the level one subscription. The level two at $4.99 a month is you get a free um, item from my uh, um Balance Marketplace. If you go to drmarissa.life forward slash shop, you'll see things that you can get there. And 
that's it for today's show. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, hey, you know it's all about balance. Peace in, peace out. World peace through inner peace. This is Dr. Marissa reporting live from her loving room, wishing you the best day ever. See you tomorrow. Eyeballs are still here. I haven't quite figured out a way to uh, have the stream for subscribers only. So guess what? <laughs> you don't. You don't have to be a subscriber today to just connect with me after the show. Please do use the chat to chat. That way, I know uh, uh, who's here, and if you have any questions at all whether it's about uh, starting your own podcast or uh, being a co-host with me or um, how to be happier than you are. If it's a relationship question, this is your time. Whatever you'd like to talk about, um, I'm here for that. If you want to write a book, if that's something that you are also uh, interested in, uh, the I do have time now to just bring up uh, what I was talking about before. And, um, nope, that's not what I want, <laughs> but, uh, thank you so much. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing yourself in that interview, Nicole. And, uh, I thought it, it you know, those interruptions were not as bad as, uh, they sounded to us live, but I thought the picture was brilliant and, uh, you looked absolutely beautiful on camera. You know, it's funny cause I'm on the radio. People say all the time, um, well, I used to joke about it and say, yes, I have the face for radio or I have the looks for radio, which is like the joke uh, for broadcasters. But, uh, you know, everybody has cameras in the studio and, uh, you know, you, you, you can't say that anymore. You have to look good as well. Uh, let's see. I'm going to pull this up. And uh, I'm going to close this guy if I can. I can't get in my glasses anymore. So if you go to the shop, these are the things that I have available for um, the, the, the second level subscribers get to get one a month for free and uh this month is the audiobook of mm -hmm, is the audiobook of the happy 88 and i don't know why this is not going nope. okay well it's not gonna happen so I'm not gonna fight it uh here we go So I'm glad that you enjoyed that, Nicole. So um, since we don't seem to have any questions right now, um, one question I did not ask you when uh, I was interviewing you because we ran out of time was um, now as far as where, where the medical research is around multiple sclerosis because Christina Applegate is – definitely not looking um, as she, are there different levels of um, MS and, and are you, you know, I, I guess I don't know enough about it. So I would love to be educated um, to, to understand and, and how we can support, like, are there ways to, 
you know, obviously we're bringing more awareness today to the platform. Um, are there good organizations that we can look into supporting or volunteering for that are actively looking for solution? Because I am solution oriented. And you know what? Let's see if we can't actually bring you on here. So I don't know if you're camera ready, but uh, let's see. I'm going to just send this to you right now in your, um, I'm going to put it in the chat. And if you want to click that, let's see if you can, I'm going to try something new here. See if I can pull you in on camera. See if that works. So, so yeah, so instead of you typing everything out, it'll be easier for you to, <laughs> to educate me uh, in person. So uh, while she's doing that, I will also look at this. It is not easy to... Uh, Yay! She is camera ready. Bye. I am. Just turn off the other spot. Yes. Yeah, so well, I know. just got this blazer. Right, I have it right beside my desk, just in case. Well, <laughs> you did good. Let's see. Okay, that's too big. Let's go back. Let's do this one. Yeah. So, did it feel weird watching yourself? A little. <laughs> so I, you know, I teach positive psychology mindset and it's still a little awkward to watch myself yeah you know yeah it took just, me a long time yeah to be comfortable because that critic is just so strong and active and uh mouthy <laughs> well, sure is. i'm grateful that i'm i feel much more confident now like i can watch it and i hear the critic and i can ask it to shush whereas in the past I just believed it. <laughs> so yes, yeah, and there's a and there's a really good discipline for us all to uh, to learn from for sure. Yeah. So um, multiple sclerosis. Yes. Education. Yes. I did start yeah. typing the response. Oh, there are two types. Uh, I mean, and there may be even different things today that I may not be fully up to speed on. But there are two primary types. It's relapsing, remitting, and progressive. Uh, I was diagnosed with relapsing, remitting, which is where you have an episode and then you may or may not regain full functionality or you may get partial functionality back and then you could have another episode and another. Uh, it can turn to progressive. I don't know the exact statistics around that, but I got healthy very quickly. And we we talked a lot already about my, my perspective. I identified yeah. as a healthy, active, healed person. So I didn't even question that it would convert to progressive for me. I mean, I'm assuming, I don't know. I'm assuming maybe Christine Applegate or some like someone who has a consistent degeneration is likely the progressive form. Right, right. Of it. Yeah. Um, so they, so that, yeah. And there, there's a lot of natural health and there's medical recommend, like recommendations that has evolved quite a lot in the past 20 years in terms of the information available both on the natural health side, as well as on the pharmaceutical side. I don't mm -hmm. currently take any pharmaceuticals, nor have I ever for MS. Mm -hmm. um, and that might be, that, that doesn't mean it's not the right choice for someone else. That just, uh, I just, uh, I was able right. to do it with the natural health side. Yeah. And, and you, and you, you know, it's not a one size fits all. I think that's another BS that people are constantly being, uh, you know, uh, faced with is that, you know, what's the solution or what's the answer? And it, it's rarely that way, right? You mm -hmm. you have multiple, you know, approaches. That's why coaching, you know, and all of that is, is, uh, is different mm -hmm. for, for whoever. And I think, honestly, one of the reasons why tragedy happens is that if we can take the opportunity to go through it, pass the pain into the power. We are the best. I mean, people now know it's possible to do what you've done 
And if they have it, it's that place of hope. Well, she was able to, or she was, you know, what approach did she use? It's something that I can try. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's one of the most beautiful things about tragedy, right? Yeah. Is that uh, it provides, that's one of the reasons why we're here Mm -hmm. is to take something that's happened to you that was painful and share it in a way that you know you can get past that pain Mm -hmm. into the power. So, so. And and to your point, inspire and even empower others to believe that it's possible for them as well, whatever that is. And even if it's not a diagnosis, it it, it can be an inspiring story of overcoming anything that um, can allow others. Yeah. I just wanted to pull this up because I, I, I saw some great advice from oh, uh, Christina Applegate. Se- tap your sense of humor, right? Yep. Hers is, uh, and, and uh, you know, she talks about her, the show that she did, uh, Jack Osborne. Um, did you know Terry Garr had it as well? Oh, actually I didn't. I- yeah, I was, um, Quite surprised. These are all these. Wow, these are all new people than the list that I um, came with too. But the Soprano star, um, Autumn Soprano. I think. Did you know that? I think I did see her. Um, Yeah, two thousand and one. Yeah, your own. Oh wow, Chris. Right. And and again, it's like um, Anne Romney Center. Uh, again, it's the um, the shift from oh that is something horrible to oh this is something that is an opportunity. I know it's not easier said than done because when you're going through pain, physical, mental, emotional, mental health matters Mondays, it's difficult to see that. Right, the light. It's when you're sitting in the dark, it's really difficult to turn the light on. Get it? I get it. You know, I was talking about you know sitting in covers over your head, and this is something that post pandemic, there are still people who have developed the habit. I just saw a post um, as I was uh, scrolling through it. I'm a, I'm a giver, not necessarily re- a receiver, but one caught my eye around you know. I'm still isolated. I have developed a habit during the pandemic. And she was a guest on my show. I'm not going to say who it was, who, who, you know, is, is admitting that she prefers to be isolated and on her own. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a slippery slope there. Right. Yeah. It's difference between it's okay to have enjoy some alone time and have some independence or quiet and, you know, our soul, I believe, is born for connection. And and so it's, you know, there's a way perhaps to find both. But to your point, yeah. that's that yeah. that experience for over those years, that was when we talked about, you know, having a constant space repetition or an emotional impact. It was kind of both because it was an emotional impact, the, 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 like COVID, the whole experience. And it was now over time, we got repeated patterns of isolation, of not being in public. So, and it's just, you know, we can see the gift in it and learn from it and grow. And it's just a matter of choice though. I think yeah. as well. I think that's the big, you just said the chip word, uh, the C word that is not that word, but the chip <laughs> word choice is our most powerful tool that we have in life. Another word for it is focus. What you choose to attend to, what you focus on grows bigger. So you could either on any subject, focus on the side that is hopeful or focus on the side that is worst case scenario. Choice is yours. Which one makes you feel better? It sounds very easy. It is not easy, but it's simple. It is as simple as that. And you are a great example of I refuse to look at that diagnosis as what it is, my prognosis or my uh, future uh, state. I'm not going there. I will not go there. And, and, and you can do that on anything, right? 
Mm -hmm. uh, I have Absolutely. a thought that I'm not going to get that whatever. Um, don't go there. Oh, Dr. Mercer, are you asking me to be in denial? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, denial is not a, always a bad thing, right? Yeah. So, it's almost like fake it till you make it, but you can take it a level up from that and actually believe it like and identify with what what's possible for you. Yeah. You want I mean, I mean, it's, it's crazy. Um, I think everybody can, I'm, I've been guilty of this. Something happens in your body that is abnormal. The first thing you do is you go to my assistant Google and you put in what, what do I have? Right. You make an appointment with the doctor, but then from, from the time you get to the doctor that, that two week, you know, you're like, it's worse and worse because the symptoms, you know, you're focused on the symptom. That's all you feel. That's all you see. And uh, uh, the psychological term for that is Pygmalion effect, right? Pygmalion effect is the opposite of I'll believe it when I see it. Mm. It is I see it because I believe it. Yes. Right. So I also call it affectionately going to MSU University. Make shiitake up. Oh, we're <laughs> off of the air. I can say it. Make shit up. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I have FCC uh, uh, regulations. I have but <laughs> that, <laughs> that, yeah, that is, um, you know, where a lot of us go. And mm -hmm. it is a, it's a habit. People say, oh, I'm a worry wart, you know, with kind of like pride mm -hmm. or, or, you know, uh, uh, I'm an overachiever, exhausted, and I can't move anymore with some pride. I work 80 hours a week with some pride. And what they're doing is they're setting themselves up for all of the things that come with that, right? Literally. Worry is a prayer for bad things to happen. That's a Native American saying, right? Uh, living in the worry prattle of your head is like sitting in front of the Grand Canyon with a paper bag over your head. Yeah, it is. I rest my case. So, yeah. so to to really shift out of that is a discipline. It takes practice, as you were saying. You know, your two tools, great tools to use that you got from Bob Proctor's uh, teachings. Yeah. Great tools. Uh, whatever you can use to move in the direction of. Joy, self care, self worth, self love. Um, uh, life does not suck. Move away from life sucks, right? Every single thought, you know, um, uh, one of my happy idiot tools that I got from Esther Hicks is uh, in every moment you, you, you have a thought, um, I'm going to be late. Mm -hmm. Is that the best feeling thought that you could have? Um, uh, I oh, God, I, I just can't stand that person. Is that the best feeling thought you could have? Yep. So but, powerful. But the desperate how does that make me feel? And is exactly. that going to bring me ahead in life or put bring me backwards? Because you're not going to stay still. You're either going forward or backwards. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you can be on the right track, but if you don't keep moving, you're going to get run over. You know what? <laughs> three words I love to use and I have had people use is instead of identifying with, you know, I am a worry wart or I am an overachiever and workaholic is, is to allow them to, if they believe that right now, they can use the words up until now, up until now I have been a worry wart and I am choosing to now, like, so they can, because a lot of times people are so attached to that identity that they can't, they don't believe it when they say I'm no longer a worry ward or I, or I have peace. And mm. they're like, no, that's not real. So if you say up until now, I have been that and, and I'm now choosing a different way. It's like, I'm acknowledging how I have been showing up and I'm choosing something different. It's a cool. Uh, <laughs> time. <laughs> Oh, no, that was a cheer. <laughs> I mean, I heard the cheer. I just. <laughs> that was a cheer. I, I, I'm a, I'm an affirmer. Can you tell? <laughs> yes. I have noticed. Yeah. Awesome. I, uh, that's great. Up until now. 
right? Up until now. I love it. I love it. So um, I still don't see it. This is very new, by the way. I just started doing this subscription kind of against my will. Didn't want to do it. But um, so, so. Are you refusing to? <laughs> up until now. But maybe for the next couple of weeks still. Yeah, testing a new um, format, trying something new. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, personal questions. Are you married? Have yeah. you been married? Do you have children? Yes, I'm married and I have. we have one child. He's just turned nine today, actually. He's nine today. They're just out playing oh. baseball for a couple hours. And oh, so, yay. You know, How wonderful. <laughs> um, and what's his name? His name is David. Yeah. Happy birthday, dear David. Happy birthday. You have a great mom. <laughs> oh, you have a good voice. Um, Thank that you. <laughs> yeah, David was my father's name, too. So that's kind oh. of interesting. Yeah. But yeah. that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. And what does he think of uh, the stuff that you do? Uh Mostly good. He hears when he sees me do it. We talk. I, I use these types of things with him, right? If he said I am never good enough, I would ask him to reframe that. <laughs> so yeah. Sometimes uh -huh. it's annoying. And he's like, "No, I just want to feel bad right now," and that's okay too, right? That's not going to immediately correct every second. But, um, but yeah, then, that's funny because my I have two daughters, mm -hmm. and that was their response, uh, even to this day. Um, if I try to make them feel better, they'll say, mom, just need a minute to feel like crap, you know? And, uh, as much as I don't like it, I will let them do it because yeah. I had to learn too that skipping off, um, negative feelings is also not helpful because yeah. you haven't really fully processed them. Yeah. So that's why my mom has changed from, you know, do a quick pivot. Don't do a quick pivot. If you're in a situation where you can actually get one with that pain, anger, piss offedness, aggravation, resentment, sadness, depression, then do it. If you're not in a situation where you can do that, when I'm standing speaking to thousands of people on stage and I have a feeling of whatever that is, don't give into it promise that part of you that you will address it in the bathtub later on tonight. But, but uh, certainly you have to, because what you do not deal with will come back and deal yeah. with you. And I definitely don't want him to ex believe that it's bad to have those motions. It's not good or bad. It just is. And he might take longer to process it than I, maybe I, maybe, and I have an adult, so I can see it from a different perspective. <laughs> Um, so I, I, allowing, and I, I do think we do try to say like, it's okay to feel that way. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, what, what do you want to do about it? If anything, like, yeah. what, like, so that we don't just stick in that. But, but, uh, but I agree. You don't, I do want him to feel like he's okay. He never has to hide if he's angry or frustrated, right, right, um, right, right. but also not just stay there forever. <laughs> You've got to get out yeah. of that. Yeah. <laughs> Can I ask what your husband does? Is he similar in, in the area? No, he works in business strategy and corporate environment. And um, his name is also Dave. He just <laughs> learns what I teach by diffusion, <laughs> what I talk about, because it's just, we live in the same household. Um, so What was that? Because we live in the same household, like the same home. Oh, oh I thought you said another word. <laughs> okay, no. <laughs> No, they were off the air. Uh, that's an interesting contrast because I do this kind of work as you do in corporations mm -hmm. and uh, the level of understanding in leadership and strategy is there still a preponderance of leaders who believe that uh, companies should, uh, and this is for you LinkedIn that are listening in, um, that uh, companies should run like a well-oiled machine. Hmm. And that uh, one of the most common things that I encounter in the first meeting when I meet with leaders is I don't I because I'll ask them what frustrates you 
And the number one thing that comes out is I don't understand why people just can't do their job. It is not rocket science. Why can't they just follow direction? And I take a breath <laughs> and I gently say, because companies and organizations are made up of, of human beings and human beings by very nature are illogical, irrational, and common sense is uncommon. So you, your frustration on an expectation, that's on you, boo, <laughs> because I tip with the, the, the most successful leaders that I get to work with are the ones that get that the, the task, which is on top of the circle, which is getting things done, whatever the objective, the task, the goal is, will only happen if you connect the bottom of the circle, which is the relationships between people. If you don't have the relationships between people, I'm not talking about romantic relationships and office romance. I'm talking about respectful relationships where you, you lay out something that is done based on the vision that you have collectively created so they understand the translation from the vision to what they're doing on a day-to-day, -day, wherever they are in an organization, that's a learning organization, then things will go 88% of the time smoothly. But 12% of the time, you're not going to have the best outcome because it's a growth and expansion process. So uh, there's a little organizational. Um, yeah. Well, uh, and also, you know, getting pe people are emotional. They have things going on at home that comes to work. They have habits. Are they, they were maybe programmed. We talked, you know, Bob Proctor used the word paradigm. They may have a paradigm of, of being late or of not finishing things, or they may have characteristics that isn't who they are in their soul, but it is maybe how they're showing up. Maybe they have strengths that are creative and they're in a role that's technical because they went to school to be a in a technical role because they thought they should do that. And now they're in a career that's not totally in alignment. With yeah. Career. Yeah. I call that a technically, um, uh, technically brilliant and emotionally challenged. <laughs> <laughs> because <Yep. laughs> you really can't, you cannot separate. You mentioned that earlier. You cannot separate. Leave your personal stuff at home and, and come to work as a professional. You're one person. So if you are having some issues in your relationships at home, it's going to show up at work. And if you're having issues in your relationships at work, it's going to show up at home. So even if you uh, even if you don't talk about it in detail, right? Sometimes people can control their. They may not bring all the gossip out, but it affects them emotionally, energetically, right? It, 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 it still affects their performance, even if they're not outwardly talking about it the entire time, because yeah, the degrees of how much they talk yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's sure. so interesting. People are interesting. <laughs> they are. We are. We are. And I've just looked at the time. Um, we're out of time, but I am so glad that you got to come on. This was a very nice uh, non-planned uh, yeah. uh, happening, and I'm glad that you got to do it. Thanks for uh, helping me with my extra <laughs> special uh, uh, $2.99 <laughs> subscription gift. And I I, uh, I know that we will stay in touch, and uh, we'll look forward to manifesting something where we share the stage somewhere and uh, my best to you and go have a great time with your son and his birthday. Thank you so much. It was so great You're to be welcome. here. welcome. Okay. See you soon. Bye. You too. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. Hit the free subscribe. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, the subscribe. <laughs> and uh, I'll figure out how to do this. Have the best day ever. We'll see you tomorrow on the air. <laughs>